Hi, welcome to the second episode of Icelandic for Foreigners. For today's episode, I've prepared a keynote presentation to talk about Icelandic pronunciation. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that now. All right, we're going to go ahead and give this a try. I've never tried to make a video using Keynote before, so hopefully this works out. All right, welcome to the first video about Icelandic pronunciation. Um, your experience with Icelandic has probably taught you that Icelandic is pretty hard to pronounce, but when you break it down, it's actually not too bad. And this video is going to take you through just a couple useful tips to get you started. So what we're looking at here, this is the Icelandic alphabet. And I'm actually not going to go over the names of every letter in this video because there are other videos on YouTube that you can use to do that if you're interested. Maybe I'll try and stick a little link onto the video right here so that you can watch one of those if you want. Um, however, after this video, I will be putting out other videos that deal with the letters one by one, or maybe a video that deals with three or four of the letters at once. That way, you can start to see how each of them works. But today, it's going to be a little bit more general of an overview for Icelandic pronunciation, so I'm not going to go through every letter in this video. All right, so... With Icelandic pronunciation, in this video I'm going to give you three tips. One of them is maybe something that you've already learned, but the other two are a little bit more subtle. But in my experience, they're two of the tips that can, when you don't do them right, it's very obvious to Icelanders that you're not Icelandic. And they're not terribly hard to master, so if you start thinking about these things now and start listening for it, I really think that with a little practice this can, can come and it goes a really long way to making you sound more Icelandic. Okay, so the first one is the emphasis or the stress of the word is always on the first syllable. And we're going to take each of these rules one by one in a minute. The second rule is the principle of long vowels. And that's going to mean something slightly different than it does in English, so I'll talk about that in a minute when I get to it. And the last one is what's called double consonants. So let's take each one of those one by one. So the first thing is emphasis on the first syllable. And emphasis or, or stress in a word, we have it in English, but it, it works differently in English. What stress is, is it's actually interesting. When we say a word, we make a certain part of the word. If it's multiple syllables, we make a certain part of the word uh, slightly louder and slightly longer. And that's how we come to recognize the word. So I have a couple English examples here. In the word graduate, the stress, as I, you can see that I put it in capital letters, the stress is on the first syllable, graduate. We don't say graduate, that would be weird, but we say graduate. So in this one, apartment, the stress is actually on the second syllable. We don't say apartment, we say apartment. And in this last word, gasoline, it's on the last syllable, gasoline. So that's how it works in English. It's very random. It's actually very hard for foreigners to learn English because when you look at a word that's written down, you don't actually know where the stress is unless you have someone pronounce it for you. But in Icelandic, it's much more simple. So let's take a look at Icelandic and how it works. As you can see from the title, obviously, the um, emphasis is always on the first syllable, even if the word is 10 syllables long. So I have a couple examples for you. The first one is dalur, which is Ic the Icelandic word for valley. Dalur. So that's a simple two-syllable word, but the stress or the emphasis is on the first syllable. Dalur. This next one is three syllables, but we're still going to put that stress on the first syllable. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. And that's, of course, the capital of Iceland. Reykjavik. We're not going to say Reykjavik. We're going to say Reykjavik. So this is a four-syllable word, but we're still going to put that emphasis on the first syllable. Framhaldskóli. Framhaldskóli. And the last one, this word should look familiar to you if you've watched The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Eyjafjallajökull. Eyjafjallajökull. So that stress is going to be on the first syllable. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free to shoot me a comment or a message. All right, so that brings us to our second principle here, long vowels. Now when we think of long vowels in English, we're usually thinking about things like A and E 
and I the way that we learn them when we're in school. But in Icelandic, actually any one of the vowels in the alphabet can be long or short. And in this case, we're not talking about the, cha the sound of the vowel changing. We're talking about how long you hold the vowel. And so we might have, if we take that very first vowel on that list, ah, we have a long ah, and we have a short ah. And I'm going to give you a couple examples so that you can hear kind of how that sounds. So here are two words, one with a long vowel and one with a short vowel. The first one, pala, is with a long vowel. So you hear how I drag that out. I know that this is strange to do. You'll feel a little bit uncomfortable doing it at first, and you'll think, do I really need to do it like this? But the answer is yes, you really need to do it like this. And of course, when you get better at Icelandic, you won't need to exaggerate it quite as much. But I really recommend exaggerating it when you're first starting, because it'll actually sound more correct to Icelanders when you do that, even though you'll perhaps feel slightly foolish doing it. So that first word, tala, tala. The second word there has a short vowel, talti, talti. So here are the difference between those two, tala, talti. Here's another example with the vowel o, thola, thola. And then the short vowel, tholti. And here's one more example. So on the top is the long vowel. Svölum. Svölum. And the short vowel. Hörð. Hörð. So I'm hoping you're kind of starting to hear the difference between the two. And I know it's a little bit odd. Now there's a simple rule for knowing whether or not a vowel in a word is a short vowel or a long vowel. And I'm about to explain that rule to you. So here's the rule. The first vowel of the word is long, unless it's followed by a consonant cluster. So the first vowel of the word is long. Like we said, the emphasis of the, every Icelandic word is on the first syllable. And that's going to be a long vowel, unless it's followed by a consonant cluster. A consonant is, of course, any letter that's not a vowel. So if it's followed by just one consonant, that first vowel is followed by one consonant, then it's going to be a long vowel. If it's followed by a consonant and then another vowel, it's going to be a long vowel. But if it's followed by two consonants, then it's going to be a short vowel. If it's followed by two or more, I should say. Now, I have some examples here that we're going to take a look at. Okay, so here are some examples. On the left side, the left columns, we have words with long vowels, and on the right we have words with short vowels. So if you notice those words on the left, all of the, in all of those words there is a vowel and then a consonant, but only a single consonant, which means that the vowel before it is long. And if you look on the right, after each of the first vowels you have two consonants at least, and that means that it's going to be short. So listen to the difference between these. So on the left we have madur, aidislegur, Lika, Ega, Riev. So those are all long. Now on the right we have consonant clusters, which means we're going to have short vowels. Fast, Heicht, Nista, Eikt, Riest. So those are all short vowels. Now that brings us to our third rule, my third tip for having good Icelandic pronunciation, and that is double consonants. Now this idea is also going to be very foreign to you, likely, unless you've already started to listen to Icelandic, and maybe you've noticed it. So basically what you have is you have certain consonants that you're going to see two written next to each other, and that's going to sound different than just if there were one. And these are all the vowels that can be doubled in their sounds. B, D, G, F, M, N, R, and S. Additionally, there's some other letters that you're going to see written as doubles, but it doesn't have quite the same effect. Um, you're going to see double P's, double T's, double K's, and double L's, but it's going to be slightly different. When, we, when I get to each of those letters in separate videos, I'm going to explain how those ones are affected when you see them double. But right now we're just going to talk about that first row of letters and how their sounds change when you see two of them written next to each other. So here's a quick example just so you get an idea of what it's going to look like. Here we have two words. 
the only difference between the two words is one of them has a single n and the other has two n's. Now, there's going to be two differences between these words. The first one, if you remember, with um, long vowels, on the word on the left, we're going to have a long vowel because there's only one consonant after. And on the, word, on the right, there's only going to be a short vowel because there are two consonants after. But there's also going to be something else that happens with the word on the right. We're going to hold that n doubly long. So the word on the left, vena, vena. The word on the right, vinna, vinna. So listen how that n is held. It's almost as if you're saying two words, vin and na, and you're doubling the length of that n. You're saying it twice, vinna. Now I've got here several more examples with each of those consonants that we looked at earlier and how it's going to sound when you double it. So the first one, the double B, puppy, puppy. You hear how it's, it's, more, it's longer than just saying puppy. It's puppy, and we're going to hold that B. The next one down, rettast, rettast. Vekkur, vekkur. Kaffi, kaffi. Amma, amma. Kenna, kenna. Verra, verra. Hissa, hissa. So with each of those words, first of all, that first vowel is always going to be short because it's followed by two consonants. And then the consonant itself is going to be extra long. We're going to hold that consonant longer. So to review really quickly the recap for these three tips, the first one is emphasis or stress of an Icelandic word is always on the first syllable, which means even if you have this very, very long word, you're always going to put the stress, the emphasis, on that very first syllable. The next one is long vowels. We have to pronounce certain vowels in Icelandic extra long if they're not followed by two or more consonants. And that's really going to feel strange at first, and you'll feel a little silly doing it. But it's an extremely important step into sounding more Icelandic, because Icelanders do this all the time, even if they don't realize they are. And then the last one was double consonants. When we see consonants doubled, we're going to pronounce them double. We're going to hold on to them longer. My recommendation for practicing these principles, especially as you start learning the sounds of the different letters, is to just practice reading aloud. Go to a news website or get a, a newspaper or a book and start reading it and actually paying attention for these different principles. Look at a word and say, okay, is this going to be a long vowel or a short vowel? Is this, are there any double consonants that I need to be thinking about? And that's really going to help you start to gain an Icelandic accent. Thank you for watching this video. I know that some of the concepts that I went over maybe seem a little bit abstract right now or a little bit strange, or maybe it seems like it's too much to remember, and that's okay. You don't need to all of a sudden be using all of these, these three tips perfectly all of a sudden. That's, it just takes a lot of practice. So my recommendation is to be thinking about it. Every once in a while, come and rewatch the video so that you remember the rules, and stay posted because I'm going to post some more videos about the individual letters, and I will be re-emphasizing those rules in those videos. I'll be talking about long vowels and double consonants. That'll be repeated in later videos. But just be thinking about it, and if you start practicing now, it really is something that you can get good at. So, good luck!